everybody, it's Martha. Welcome back to my Shabby Craft Studio. I've been away for a while, and we'll talk about that. And I'm a little stressed today, so I thought maybe if I work on my stuff and I have you all around to keep me company, maybe I won't stress quite as much. I apologize for any background noise. Uh, husband is away at the moment, but I'll bet he's going to contact me any moment now and tell me he's on his way home. Do I want him to bring lunch? What do I want? Etc. Etc. Plus, we live in a community called Lake of the Woods. And as the name implies, there are a lot of trees here. And it's fall. So there are a lot of machines going outside. There are machines for blowing leaves. There are machines for mulching leaves. There are machines for doing all sorts of crazy things out there and they're loud. So I apologize in advance and this video may have to be um, pieced together. And I apologize for that in advance as well. I hope I'm doing the stamp right side up. It, I'm not sure you can really tell either way. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so there's that. And I am just going to be working on this cover. Um, I made a cover this morning totally messed it up but I'm gonna go with the flow and just call it a design element instead of a mistake because that's my favorite thing to do is not beat myself up and to tell myself it's just a de another design element not a mistake so I had done I had done these previously and I thought they were going to work for this journal I'm working on. I didn't know which one, but I played with them and put them together. And hopefully I'm doing everything in screen and for you to see. Anywho's, um, these are a la Artie Mays, Andrea Allen, who has really inspired me beyond words. I, I can't even begin to tell you how she has brought out the, and, and the dogs, <laughs> the dogs, the dogs will bark. She has brought out the wannabe artist in me, and I just simply can't even begin to tell you what she has done for me and how much it means to me that she has shared her love of doing this stuff and the techniques that she has shared. She is a real artist. So I am just slapping on my collage page because I don't like um I don't like Mod Podge. It smells. And you've probably heard me say that a bazillion times. I don't know how well this is gonna hold. I probably should be using some other sort of glue, but hey, we're going to go with the flow here. I can make it work no matter what happens. So <laughs> yeah, so I hope I haven't lost all my followers. I know I have been really MIA a lot longer than I planned on being, um, and I apologize for that. My eyes that I had cataract surgery on. Now I had this all set up the way I wanted it previously. And now I don't know how it was. And I should have taken a picture, but it took me 10 minutes to find my phone when it was sitting right over on my sewing machine, by the way. Yeah. It's been one of those mornings. It really has. So uh, my eyes. Had my cataract surgery. Had the right eye done. Did a, did a video after that. Uh, went and had my left eye done and honestly the left eye went a whole lot better than the right eye <laughs> the experience was better <laughs> first off um, the surgery went better um, the doctor totally 
told the anesthesiologist he was going no further until the anesthesiologist was would give me more medication. And the anesthesiologist said, nope, he wasn't doing it. And the doctor said, I'm not going any further until you give her more because her last experience here was not very good. <laughs> and so the anesthesiologist gave me a little more happy juice. And let me tell you what, if I could have that happy juice all the time, I can see why people get hooked on that stuff. <laughs> I would definitely definitely walk around with that stuff in my veins all the time if I could. I mean, seriously. I totally messed this up. I think this was supposed to go over here. But that's okay. I'm going to make it work. And if I don't like it, I'll make another one. Because after all, I made those other three and didn't like them. So I'm making another one. <laughs> right? It's just the way it goes. So, um, anyway, in between my surgeries, I did some shopping and I found some things that I really have enjoyed using. Um, it has taken me a little while to get my mojo back and to feel comfortable with crafting. My eyes are still adjusting. Um, at the moment, I have to wear readers, which are basically magnifying glasses. I don't know if it, see how it magnifies? <laughs> they're just cheap readers. They're plastic from Walmart, but I think they're pretty. I had to get the, I had to get the, the sparkly ones. So um, I can see without them. I just can't see real clear without them. So, and that's, that's all good. That's okay. I'm happy with that. So we're going to let this dry a little bit. I don't know what I'm going to do in the meantime. <laughs> I guess I'll show you some things. I will show you some of my new things. So, excuse me for reaching in front. This is one of my new brushes. I got three of them. Couldn't tell you where the other, well, one of them is in here as well in my little water bottle. Those are two of them, and then there's a wider one. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. Came as a set of three, and I'm really enjoying using them for Mod Podging, glue. Um, I don't use them for my gesso. I have a different brush that I'm using until that one poops out on me, and when it does, I may use this one here. But I'm, I really, I haven't used this one at all yet, I love that they're short like this, and I love that they come in three different sizes in the package. So, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, which was last Thursday, <laughs> I went to Joann's, Joann Fabrics and Crafts, and their Fiskars items were all 50% off. So, I was able to get... And I'm moving things out of the way so you can see. I was able to get this beautiful mat. As you can see, I've been using it very well <laughs> since then. I've been admiring other people's gray mats that they've gotten from like Arteza and so forth. And I really like that they're non-reflective as far as on camera. And it's just the right size. It is like 18 maybe 19 inches if you include this probably half inch border all around it. It's got the measurements on it. So if I'm measuring, you know, something out, I can measure it on here. I can cut on this because it's a self-healing mat. It is a Fiskars and I'm really enjoying using it and I know it'll clean up really well. Um, it's just the right size for my desk. It's not so big that it takes up the whole desk and I have to move things off it when I want to clean it off. And it's not so small that I can't get anything done on it. Like I can open a journal on here and it's just the right size. So I really do like it a lot. Um, so let's see. 
this is this is not sticking down so I am just this some of these things are paper and some of them are napkin and some a couple of elements are tissue paper well this element is tissue paper so um, and I gessoed I pre gessoed the cardboard and you can see that when I used the collage page some of the color did bleed off of the paper and this element and this element here are from um, a paper that I I just sort of put this together using uh, the graphics fairy elements I was practicing making digital sheets and I put this together and I, I just really liked it so um, I printed it out and I tear them out and use them as elements. This is my cover. This fabric I actually have in my Etsy shop and I just love it. I found a big roll of it at the thrift shop. But when I ironed and glued my fabric on, I meant for this piece to be on the inside and this piece to be on the outside. And my, my cardboard was already like that. And I didn't I didn't like that for the cover. So I ended up turning it <laughs> the other way out. But I had already put my fabric on. And this is where I messed up. My fabric folds over the edge in this direction. And this was supposed to be the inside. So this is the piece with the raw edges showing. I'm okay with that. I, I'm just going to let it go. And to be honest, um, I really wanted that on the spine. It's not centered, but it's okay. And then this is going to go on here, but I need to break it up with something behind it. So I haven't found that yet. And I am, but I do like that. And I like that the leaves show. Now I haven't decided if I'm going to put it up here and put something down here. Or if I'm going to, you know, offset it and put something up here. I haven't quite decided that yet and this is kind of a, a hubbub stuff full of stuff kind of um, video and I'm sort of struggling because I haven't done a video in a long time now I have been losing things all day literally misplacing them like I said I was looking for my phone and it was one arm length to my left over on the sewing machine and I had to walk around the house three times to find it. Okay. So there are my my signatures to go in here. And yeah, I'm not crazy about this rough edge. I'm going to find something to put around this edge to kind of hide the roughness and I'm um, going to sew around it. So that'll hold it on. It'll be fine. These are my signature covers out of paper, uh, from a paper pad. And then I did do a couple of digital pages myself. So I did, I made up that digital page. And let's see, I think there's two in each one actually. Maybe not. Maybe? Yes. No, that's a paper page from a, the paper pad. That's one of my digital pages. So I guess I just did one of my own digital pages in each one. Let's see. So I did that page. And I just used um, stuff from the Graphics Fairy. I have a couple of things in there that are um, public domain. I have the background paper is my own tea stained paper that I used. I did that one. I really like this one. So I did that, and I'm really happy with the signatures, except I feel like there's more to be done inside. I, it's already pretty <laughs> pretty fluffy, but that's okay. The spine on this journal can handle that, and I'm okay with that. It There's plenty, plenty of room there, and it's going to have a tie closure, so it'll be fine. It's got, I mean, look, the cover is even bouncing open. So lots more room in there. And then this is going to go on here somewhere with some fabric layers behind it. 
So, um, a couple more things that, while that this, this is drying, because there's a couple more things I want to do to that, I wanted to show you a couple of more things that I have been working on, a couple finished projects. If you remember, I did this paper bag clutch based on the Firefly Studio video. And I absolutely enjoyed making it so, so much. And I, I just, I just love it. It's crinkly and it's fun. And this is the finished, finished product. I did do a bit of a um, cluster there, a fabric cluster. And there's the pocket there that you could put coupons or whatever in. And then there's a lot of fold out pages I really I really stretched myself on this and did more than I thought I would as far as putting it together I don't know I think it's around a traveler's notebook size this card I and pocket I just had so much fun doing if you put it in there it looks like that's just on the edge of the pocket but it's actually a tag and I used mostly antique papery and medieval mirage. Sorry. <laughs> Slow brain today. I'm not used to talking to you all. So I'm just having a struggle. I hope you'll bear with me. But anyway, I really enjoyed making this. And I think I'm going to make some more. I might, I might give them as Christmas gifts to people, but I need to get on the, the horse seat and start doing this because um, it's, it's coming up quick. I really like that. I, ju I just like the tall, skinny cards. I don't know why. It's just been fun to do. And then the pocket in the back, and then that's, a, you know, a window. So, had a lot of fun with this. I have been asked by my friend who I am making this journal for that we're working on. Um, this one. <laughs> this one that I just showed you. This journal. A friend of mine asked me to make this for a woman who runs a theological collage group. And so, I thought that was very interesting. And I... Started working on it last week. I always struggle when someone asks me to do a, a journal or a project for them. I struggle so much with it. And I keep just telling myself, just let it go. Just do what's in your heart. If she likes it, she can have it. If she doesn't like it, she'll have to find another gift for that person. Because I, I just... I can't worry about what someone else likes and doesn't like. I have to make what's in my heart. If I don't, I'm going to hate it and it won't come out right and my heart won't be into it. So I have that journal to make and she has asked me to make another journal for another friend of hers for January. And then another friend of mine asked me to make a journal for a friend of, for her daughter, I believe it is. Um, and that one is also for the beginning of January. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I am busy, busy, busy. And my Etsy shop is empty, empty, empty because I had to do this whole eye surgery thing. And then I had to, you know, you get an eye done, and then two weeks later they do the other eye. Well, the first eye that they did has given me a lot of trouble. So this is the second one that I did, and these papers are from Rachel at Roxy Creations. I added some napkin decoupage, a sticker, and another napkin decoupage, and a bird here. But the paper is just beautiful all on its own. And this one is just 
um, I, I have the extra little pocket here that's lined. And then I have the unlined pocket where the journal goes. But this is a, a smaller version with smaller envelopes. So I, um, paper bag envelopes as journal covers. But I absolutely love the way this came out. It, it came out so pretty. I was on a roll, let me tell you. So there are lots of journaling cards and it's like a, a little mini journal with lots of different size of papers in it and lots of pockets and journaling places. And I had fun with this one as well with the different size papers and making pockets out of them. So I am going to make more of these as well. And eventually I'd like to put a few of these in my shop. Now, I'm not sure if these will go as gifts or if they will just go in my shop. I haven't decided yet. I know a couple of people that might appreciate a gift like this. And I just used my sewing machine. It struggled. There's a lot of paper in here. But uh, I used my sewing machine to sew down the middle of it because I started getting lazy about not wanting to hand sew these. So, But I had so much fun with this. I really like using all the different size papers. It's been fun. And this is one of my gessoed and collaged and stamped papers. And then the other side is a pocket. And this is from a paper pack, this paper here. But this is from Rachel's Papers, this beautiful image here. So anyway, um, and then this, this folds over, but it's really like a hidden pocket. That. And then there's a, another little hidden pocket here because for the envelope, I glued the two flaps together, but I cut the end of the, the, like the bottom end of the envelope, I cut that open. So I thought that was fun. So it looks like a hidden pocket right there. So I had a lot of fun with that one too and absolutely loved working with Rachel's papers. Um, so where did I leave off? Got the, got the eyes done. First one gave me a lot of trouble. It's still actually giving me trouble. And it's been, uh, let's see, two, I think it's been three and a half weeks. No. It's been two, I'm on two and a half from the left eye. And the right eye got, to, so it's been four and a half weeks. And I went to the doctor yesterday, and he said there's some scar tissue. Um, you know when you sneeze or when you um, uh, laugh or yawn and your eyes scrunch shut? Well, if I scrunch my eyes shut real hard, that eye hurts a lot. So he said there's some scar tissue, but he's going to wait three months. I go back. More like two and a half but I go back to him and have everything checked again and we'll see what to do about it then we may do something we may not so this was the third one I made these are some of my papers that I was some of my first papers I was messing around with and that's a decoupage napkin on there in case it looks familiar to anybody um, but these are a digital paper that I put together with some of my stuff and some Graphics Fairy designs and stuff like that. Um, the, the Graphics Fairy has a premium membership. And if you join that, you can download as many images as you want. They do have a usage restriction, but um, I'm not selling these at the moment. So I'm not breaking any restrictions on that. I mean, I'm selling the materials, but I'm not selling the digital papers at this time. So... I made a little notepad with all leftovers from the other projects, and that was a blast. I have not done that before either, but I've seen Gina and Wendy and a lot of other people do this, so I thought that was fun. And so that's just a little notepad, and you really could just, if you wrote a note and you just tear the bottom off, you'd, you'd keep a whole piece of paper in there. So. I thought that was fun, and that fits in this pocket. 
And this is another paper bag. Um, this was made out of a paper bag. Same concept as the other two, but I did not sew this up to make a pocket. I decided that, well, okay, honest, <laughs> honest, what happened was I made the booklet and then I realized if I sewed the sides up, the booklet wouldn't fit in there. <laughs> So, and I had used one of my really pretty papers on the inside. So, um, I decided that I was just going to make it more like a journal, a sewn-in journal. So, I did that because I could. So, that's, again, my paper that I designed. And then lots of leftover papers in here. Like, that's from Rachel's collection. And that's from Rachel's collection. And this is one of mine based on G. Kerr, a tutorial she did. And that's music. And, and I'm really getting into using these different size papers and placing them in different places in the, um, in the journals or notebooks or whatever you want to put in there. And this is a little pocket here that I have not put a... Um, Okay, it really is a pocket. There it is. See, that's an envelope. So that's a pocket. And then this folds out. And that's the center. And I did do a pamphlet stitch on this one. I did not sew this one on the machine. And this is another, this is the other side of the envelope. And that is another pocket right there. And folds out. That's another one of my papers right here that I did. And that's another collaged and stamped and gessoed sheet. And that's a pocket. Obviously I have not put any journaling cards in these pockets yet. So yeah. So got the eyes done. Then of course it was Thanksgiving. And we had a very nice Thanksgiving with our daughter son-in-law and two granddaughters and I really enjoyed that we go out to a restaurant because everybody wants something different and then the the bottom of the paper bag actually just tucks into the top of the paper bag so I thought that was fun All right so I really enjoyed making these so we went to Cracker Barrel because Everybody wants something different. Sorry, I had to get up so I could show you something that I forgot to bring over. So everybody has something different. The kids sometimes have breakfast, and this time they had um, fried shrimp, which shocked me, to be honest. But they enjoyed it. And Tony and I had Thanksgiving dinner. Jennifer had a salad because she's very careful about what she eats. And Sid had, I think, a burger. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not cooking all that stuff. They come here, I'm not cooking all those different things. And if I make lasagna, by the time I sit down to eat it, I'm not enjoying it. And nobody helps with setup. Nobody helps cook. Well, Tony helps. Nobody helps with cleanup. And when I was growing up and as a young adult, I was taught you get in the kitchen, you help clean up, you do, you know, you help, you clear dishes, everything else. They don't do that. I don't know why, but they don't do that. I taught my daughter that, but they don't do that. They get on their phones and their iPads and everything else, and they're doing all this. Black Friday shopping for Thursday night. So a couple years ago, I told my daughter, nope, not doing it anymore. So now we go out. Everybody's happy. <laughs> Everybody gets what they want to eat. And I make lasagna for Christmas when we go over there. I take it with me. So I was uh, coveting um, some very old books that were on... Uh, Rachel at Roxy Creation on her website. But the book plus some straw paper plus the shipping, 
the the items would have come to um i don't know almost thirty dollars and then the shipping would have been thirty dollars and i would have spent sixty dollars to get just a couple of items and we spent a lot of money on my eyes getting fixed and we spent a lot of money on shopping and we've had some other expenses come up so i just felt like that was a little bit more than I should have done at this time. In the future, I do plan on putting an order in because I really want some of that beautiful straw paper. And I just, I am so jealous that Rachel living in Italy and some of the people that live in other countries have the old, old, old documents and books and stuff that they have that are more easily found so within minutes minutes literally I went on Facebook marketplace and I'm gonna turn this light on so maybe it helps a little bit here this book was on Facebook marketplace for $20 now it's very beat up the spine is missing but the print in here is just amazing. Can you see that? How amazing is that print? It's German. I know it's German. I lived in Germany seven years. <laughs> don't read it. Don't speak it. A uh, few words here and there. But this is a hymnal. And I'm going to show the front of the book. I think it says Dolter. And there it is. So if anybody out there that watches me is German, you might be able to tell me about this book. The best part about this book is, besides the beautiful color, it says Stuttgart, 1885. Well, let me tell you a little story. When my husband and I got married, he was already stationed in Germany because he was in the army. And Stuttgart is where we were first stationed. So I sort of had a three-year honeymoon in Stuttgart <laughs> in Germany <laughs> because that's, that's where it was. So there's the title page. And I am going to be scanning a lot of this. But it's absolutely amazing. I mean, it is beat up. It is not in the best shape. However, the pages really aren't, they're not cracking if you bend them. There is in the back some pencil writing. Um, obviously, a child got a hold of this. But I, I was okay with that, you know. I'm not going to scan the entire thing. But I love that it's music. But more, I love that the words are in here and this and this beautiful, beautiful type in here is just amazing. Just amazing to me. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I was just blown away that I found this like within minutes after looking at the, the lovely things that Rachel had for sale. So I'll be scanning this and using this. Um, part of my goal in 2020 is to spend more time trying to make good digitals because I really enjoy doing it and I like putting them together. And the fun part is the man gave it to me in this box here, in this Haribo box, which is also German. So yeah, that was fun. So I am going to stop this video because my husband just walked in. I'm back. Okay, so a couple of the other things that I've gotten recently. I've been watching Gail Agostinelli, um, of course. <laughs> and she has had these Fiskars scissors on her favorite things list. If you go to galagustinelli.com, she has um, Amazon links. Well... Sorry, Gail. <laughs> I, I did not buy these from her Amazon. I bought these from Joann's the same day I bought this. Spit it out, Martha. F 
Fisker's cutting mat because Fisker's was 50% off. And I couldn't beat that with a stick. So I bought these. And as you can see, they're as big as my hand. I don't have really big hands. And they're very, very nice. They take a little getting used to. Um, but you're not, you know, with scissors. And my hand isn't stuck in a, in a, a hole like that. So I really like these. And they lock shut. So if we're traveling in our van... I feel like these would be pretty safe. Then I also got these. I can't remember how much these were. Um, I can't remember. They were probably 20 something dollars and then I got 50% off. So I paid half that. Um, these were 35 or $36 and they're titanium blades and they work sort of in the same way, but you do have a hole to put your hand in but it's huge I mean it's a huge hole and the spring is pretty tight on these but these are wonderful because they clean off really easy they're titanium blades and um I can cut a lot of a lot straighter with these than I have with other scissors and if you watch my other videos cutting straight is not something that comes easily <laughs> let me tell you that so I got those and I got a bunch of other stuff, but right at the moment, I can't remember what it was. And I put most of it away. Oh, um, something else that's new that I did not get at Joann's was... Let me bring my, my mess over here. I bought these... I did find my Scotch glue at Joann's, and I absolutely love this glue. And it was $3, which is less than... It is at Staples. At Staples, last time I looked, it was three something. Um, so I did find that. I got, and probably should pull my shade down because the sun is shining on my glue, and I'm not sure how safe that is. <laughs> I don't want any glue exploding. I got these little, little tiny bottles. This is collage medium, distress collage medium. It's a Tim Holtz Ranger. And it came as a set of three. And um, this is the crazing. This is just stress medium, but it does the crackle. I don't know if I'll ever use that. I may. And then this is the one that's tinted. And I plan on using that on this, I think, to protect the front when it's all dry. Um, when I'm done, done doing whatever I'm else I'm going to do to this. So I've used uh, I've used some of this one. I lied. That's not the one. I took my glasses off so I can't see it. Oh, Martha. Okay, so I've used a little bit of this and I really like it. Um, it does it does smell a little bit. It has more of a scent than the collage podge. Um, it does not dry real shiny, and neither does this one. I really like this one. I can see me getting at least this one in a bigger jar. Um, but this came as a little set of three, and I thought it was a good way to test them out, and I got that on Amazon. And I also got something else there, but I don't know if I can find it now. Um, what else did I get? I got the little Tim Holtz brushes, but I have no clue what I did with them now. Because, <laughs> you know, why would I put it where I could find it, right? I don't know. Are they in here too? No, you would think that I would have put them in here, but I did not. So, so there's that. And um, we are going to go out and get some lunch. But when we come back, I will be back, and we are going to play with this some more. I want to use this metallic luster. Um, it's a wax metallic finish, and I got this at Hobby Lobby. And, of course, you could use a coupon. It was $6.99, and I didn't buy it that long ago. So we're going to use a little of that. 
I am going to use either the matte collage medium or the vintage collage medium or a little of both. This does not turn really, really dark. So when we come back, I will be back to add on to this video and I will talk to you then.